Our Heavenly Father, we come to be in prayer and we're always grateful for the blessing of the day. We thank you again for the rain that you said that it's much needed. Lord, I pray that you would help us as we uh, make decisions for our people. Thank you for the wisdom that we need now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 side business, I wanted to make sure that Councilwoman Paul received the information you requested on PET. Okay, that was clear. I also wanted to uh, let those in the Spadanaw, you ever heard about Spadanaw, know that our staff has been filling in for the cook or without a cook there. We're having a terrible, terrible time finding the cook. We've been filling in for, we're in our sixth week now, and I'm not sure how much longer that can go on because it's compromising our program. But um, we've had no applicants. We can't find anyone. And I know there are people out there looking right. Did they have to live in Spadanaw? I mean, no. no, I just don't know. You know, for a lot of people, it's just not worthwhile to drive for a, a short time. But I was told just before I came that there was a, a lady who has said she's turned in her application. And I will tell you she's non tribal, but at this point, not finding anyone, uh, we're probably going to have to act on that because I just can't keep staff running out there. But but we are trying to cover that and work with the community. Do you have any comments? Mm -hmm. Do you know what that position pays per hour? I can find it and give it to you. It's it's not a it's not a high paying. I'm gonna say seven, eight, something like that. But I can find out and let you know. I wanted to bring you up to date just a little bit on our uh, Indian Child Welfare as we work toward filling the positions with our new funds. Uh, it's, it's going slowly. We, we really started doing this before we had the money because we knew it was going to be difficult. But we have hired uh, two professionals, three pair professionals are, are just about to be hired. Uh, we have. Uh, Lot. In fact, I think they interviewed, we're interviewing six people today for positions. So we have a lot of positions to fill. We we really, you know, people have to pass background checks. You know, when you work with ICW, you really have to check on people. So we've had people who have not passed those background checks and, and who haven't seemed to fit. So we've been interviewing people, and there's not a lot to interview. It's working hard to get there. And, and we're pre we appreciate all the people that we find. We've also lost about three people in the last couple of months, so we've got backfill now. So if you know anyone who is, is interested in, we are hiring paraprofessionals 
to do some work, um, especially with our Families First program, a program that goes into the homes. We can train folks that have two years of college uh, to go in and do some of the um, hands-on work and modeling work, showing people how to clean houses, showing people how to uh, uh, prepare for a job, shop, budget, those things. Do not necessarily need to have a four-year degree, but they are under the supervi close supervision of someone that is degreed. So we do have those uh, opportunities and you may know someone uh, like that and so any community we have folks that they can probably some of those can probably work with especially in Mays County uh, that's the other thing I wanted to talk to you about I think you're all aware that we have the Mays County pilot prevention pilot project was funded through SBC that is going to be I think we have six pair of professional uh, openings in that project uh, Dr. Lana McLean is over that project. We're having really, really great success, and people are really, uh, the other group folks are really in, interested and involved with us in getting um, that project off the ground. We're hoping to start seeing families January 1st. Slow to get people hired. You have to do a lot of training with these people. So we're hoping January 1 to start seeing families. We'll also be doing, uh, offering parenting classes in the community, something the communities have just been crying for. That's Mays County. That's going to be our project development area. If this works like we think it will, then we're going to ask to be funded to do that in, in you know incrementally in the other counties. Uh, what this prevention project will work with is they will not work with anyone that's in the court system. These are the real prevention folks. They're going to work for those folks that we get calls from from the schools from WIC, from the clinics, from you, who are kind of going down the slippery slope. They haven't made it to the court system yet, but it looks like they could, and that the families are in jeopardy. So we're very excited about this project. And I'll, I'll keep you advised and let you know more as we get there. I have a beautiful new light heat blanket to show you. Ask for some help to show you. This is the mock-up. These will not be in uh, until probably the end of November. This is the best of socks. I think it's one of the greatest ones. Oh, man. That is beautiful. Some of you will know why I picked this color. Others don't want to know. <laughs> but this will be, uh, we'll have a few available, like we have had a pet, had a person. <laughs> but I, I, we're very, very proud of this one. Is that OU at Cherokee there in the corner? Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, would you tell me? Oh, like a, a, a comment. Norm, uh, you know, what my grandmother said about food and wearing red. Yeah. She said, only the rowdy women wear red. Yeah. 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 She said, only rowdy women wear a ring. She was right. <laughs> 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 we had a lot more fun. <laughs> uh, we'll let you know when those blankets are available. We think they'll be in the end of November, but those will, of course, go to our, our uh, Lighty Builders first and everybody else next. So we'll let you know when you get that. I, I should have given it to you to wrap up. <laughs> 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 yeah. It's red. So I it. <laughs> uh, I actually have a handout. I've almost forgotten now that about uh, the Lockheed dates and the process. So that, uh, you all will, can answer those questions because I know we've got time here that you're going to be getting them. So that should lay it out real specifically for you about when we're going to start nailing out letters, taking applications, uh, and of course elders and the disabled are first and then we do the other low-income homes with uh, young children after that. So we hope to have, we're telling everyone that payments will be out in January. We really hope it's before that, but we have to get our grant. We haven't gotten it yet. So uh, we're going to be ready when it, it gets here. I'll also talk to you a little bit about the 500000 that we received from you last year for uh, LIHEAP. <coughs> we spent 380000 and that may not be to the right penny, but that's real close, 380000 uh, for, <coughs> <pardon me, coughs> for payments 
for crisis and uh, additional supplemental uh, payments for elders and disabled. And it, it was uh, uh, very wonderful to have. We did purchase pellet and wood stoves, and we also purchased three semi-trailer loads of pellets, which will be issued to families that receive the pellet stoves. Uh, we are going to be, we did get a reach grant, grant renewed for $150,000, so we're going to be able to hire a couple of uh, carpenters, and that would be really nice to help install those stoves. Those, those stoves are not easy to install, uh, so we're going to be glad to have those fellas back. I uh, believe that's maybe about everything I was going to tell you. Let's see. <coughs> I think so. Uh, on the right, uh, where will folks be able to apply that have not been on the program prior to this? They can apply to any of our, uh, the places that we have, the outlying offices, all the field offices, on the days that we have coverage, and of course here as well. Now, the, uh, there'll be some uh, news releases going out that will show those locations and things for people who haven't applied before. And they could call in to any of those offices and get that information. So there should be multiple ways for them to find out. And I'll bring more information to you next month as we get more details. Uh, we'll know more a little bit when we get our uh, grant. We can fill in some blanks at that time. Uh, do you need an extension here that they'll be able to call? Yes. Uh, the memory's in my fingers, so give me a second. It's 453. Five four two two. That is human services. Direct to human services, and just tell them to say they want to talk to someone about applying for LIHEAP. And if they use the eight hundred number, which is still active, I believe, then they can just ask for human services. Um, you probably about this before, but could you uh, send a copy uh, of the income guidelines? Yes, and I will tell you that those do change year to year. So you have a current. You have a current I, I don't. I think that's some of the detail that we're working on. Okay. So uh, okay, but but I'll make sure Jerry knows them to get us that. And priority is going to be elders. Within. Priority is always elders and disabled. And then your next. Here. The next tier is, I believe, it's families with children under six. Okay. I think that's right. Okay. Thank you. So the question, Norma. Norma, thank, thank you, you, sir. Next, we have community services, and that's Mr. Charlie So. Welcome, Charlie. How y'all doing? Good. Uh, just to uh, update you on uh, projects that we have going, uh, Joe, up in uh, Hader County, we have uh, those uh, four units. They should be uh, going to slabs over the next couple of weeks. Because of rain, I think it's going to delay us some. And then there's two more units that are undergoing some legal work. Uh, Todd opinion of those kinds of things. That's an eagle, Mike Eagle, and uh, the Locust unit. And um, Chelsea, uh, we're purchasing land up in that area. So there's two out here ought to be happy about that. So uh, also we're going to have the uh, closing costs. We're going to be closing those houses out this soon, probably uh, within the next week. So hopefully we'll be moving equipment up in that area within the next three to four weeks. Um, Kenwood, Delaware County, uh, they're moving along pretty good. Uh, they, we're also doing some legal work there, doing a couple of appraisals, and so that's moving along. Uh, I'd like to see it move along faster, but uh, uh, sometimes that legal work kind of moves slowly. Sequoia County, uh, have you been up to the house yet, David? Yeah, it's looking good, coming along real well. The sheet rock's up. Matter of fact, uh, they're uh, getting ready to sheet rock the uh, bathrooms and then uh, one bedroom. So, And then the roofing should be done by now. The metal roofing's going up and then the siding and getting close up there. Yeah. So, and uh, the tile work's being done on the others. So, again, a lot of times that legal work's kind of slow. 
Uh, Dry Creek, we've got three units over there. Uh, that's moving along pretty good. We've got uh, legal work going on over there. So um, that's as far as housing, those uh, 27 self-help housings we have going. Uh, as far as... Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I just want to thank you and your crew, the women's grassroots group that went out on that weekend. Um, you guys, Brian and Ms. Bay, they did an excellent job for this round. Thank you. But those homes are exceptional. I was going to think about it, and yeah. it was like the problems that I have with folk at nice house now, you don't have those problems with that house with like the insecticide that's built yeah. into the styrofoam. The pre fat family people, you won't have brown and blue spiders and snakes in the ceiling because there's not that traditional ceiling that one that we saw, and they won't be infiltrating and coming in. You won't have ants and the other stuff. And then it's probably safer, storm shelter wise, than even my home is, you know, in, with the strapping and all that. So the ladies were totally impressed. And really excited and looking forward some of them to probably qualify. So and the homeowners were so gracious to thank you because that program you. is exceptional and I'm very proud of the tribe in doing that. I'm thankful for all the staff that makes that possible. These are very fine homes and uh Actually, those uh, panel homes, uh, you can actually probably put that house up in a week, maybe less, if you had some good help, because uh, once those panels go in, you can put the walls up in uh, a couple of days, and then your roofing, you can actually put those uh, panel roofings up half a day, because we uh, purchased that boom truck. Instead of four or five people trying to lift those panels up, uh, you get that boom truck, you can hook it on and swing it up onto the roof. and. Actually, it took us half a day to do that one day. Hmm? Uh, it took us a half a day to do that roofing on that. You know, you're supposed to be able to pull a vacuum on themselves. I know that there's a leak in there. That's what I heard. <laughs> 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 we'll see about that. <laughs> but they are very fine homes, and people are really proud and happy. And then, uh, especially when you get a group of people working together and all, it really creates a good community bonding and, and I know that people really appreciate your efforts, your work uh, for providing these uh, uh, homes for the people so again we all appreciate that very much. As far as uh, the community works, uh, I was uh, asked about earlier about some of the monies that's going to go out to the communities. Uh, the advertisement is out and uh, Willard Mounts is in charge of that so uh, if you need, if you have any questions, you may need to contact him about that. Uh, but he's already has started receiving applications for those uh, community works projects. Uh, his cell number is eight two 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 eight four eight, or you can reach him at four three one four one seven seven. And again, all, I think all of you know Willard. He's done a very fine job at uh, the community works project. And uh, the deadline for the applications will be uh, 16th uh, November, 16th or 17th. But uh, he's given them plenty of time to get all the information together to put their uh, uh, proposals together. And uh, also, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a committee that's going to select the projects this round. And uh, so I'm not really quite sure who's going to be on that committee. I don't even know if he does or not. But it'll be a community people that's going to be uh, handling these proposals, so I think it'll be a uh, fairly uh, selection process going to be fair and equal, so that should help. As far as the water lines, um, uh, Charlie, Blue, Mr. Keenan, yes. sorry, go ahead, please. Thank you, Charlie. I just had a question about this community work project. Um, I know that the county has been getting the word out to the community. Uh, we usually have community meetings uh, during the month, and they're going to take applications out to those people too, also. So they're not going to have to get community meetings to pick up the application like they did the last time. They can call in, we can mail it to them, or however they want to do it, come by the office, whatever, whatever it takes to get the application to them. So, uh, but they'll be taking those uh, applications out to the people. Now, Jordan, District Four, we have a small project at Oak Grove Church. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, most of them are doing really well. So uh, at this, at the one you're talking about, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, so I'll just have to, I can check on it and get back with you on that. This is the Old Grove Church. And this is in your district. This is in your district, right? Yes. Okay. It just depends on what applications come in. You're talking about this year. This year. About this year. I mean, right. are, are they looking at some that almost made it last year? Probably uh, they'll just lump them all together. Okay. Yeah. With this new committee coming in, they'll probably just lump them all together and, and evaluate them from that. So they'll have a point system they'll go through. As far as the water lines on the self-help, the uh, most uh, the easements are being uh, worked on at this point. Uh, I think Baloo would probably be the first one to go from from the looks of it. Uh, we've got most of the easements done, and then also uh, the uh, uh, probably uh, either Titanic or uh, Tail will be the next. Don't you think, Harley? So they're doing the drawings now, but those are moving along really well too. As far as because that's just a lot of work, getting all the easements done and this and that on that part. But and uh, so Blue and uh, Titanic and Far Dry Creek and Tail. Actually, Tail was ready to go, but uh, we're gonna uh, be uh, looking at. Uh, I think we've got one easement that's where it's pending, and the uh, end of the property owner lives in uh, California, so it's having a hard time getting that. Done. Other than that, uh, the roads and uh, Harley, I think they report on that. Water sanitation and some of the others are pretty well moving right along. So, any other questions at this time? Uh, Mr. Martin? Thank you. It's kind of the, uh, I forget what you call that Rocky Mountain project that's been on hold for no time at all. You know, uh, had problems there, maybe the funding coming up or whatever. I wish you had the power to push it. <laughs> That's that water uh, line Harley and I worked on early on, and we thought everything was ready to go. Matter of fact, we told people that really, uh, they were going to get water, and then uh, and then community meetings, and got everybody's hopes up. And then the number two or what number? Number seven. Number two, water district out of your county, county said uh, we can't help you because our water line is not big enough to push that water yeah. through your. Uh, uh, your head on your addition, you're done. So, but tell you what, if you could help us out, man, we'd, <coughs> we'd be indebted to you forever. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to live there, that's why. <laughs> that's our community. They've been saying that, uh, they said, we've been told that for the last 10, 15 years, and here you come along telling us the same thing, said, are you sure you're going to do something for us? I said, sure am, I'm going to do it, and I'll be dead gone. That didn't fall through. But anyway, I guess those things happen. Oh, but, uh, well, they, well, yeah, but they we are fine. They uh, they are fine for an application for a grant to uh, get them get enough money to uh, increase the size of the water line. But we're still hopeful. But if the body could help us out anyway, we sure take any help we can get. Other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have housing authority, and I don't know any of you for David today. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome. I'm Amy Woodruff. I'm here for David Sutherland. Uh, he's at the um, Speed Hall, the Southern Plains Indian Housing Association meeting in Oklahoma City. He'll be back in the office tomorrow afternoon. He asked me to uh, follow up on a question that was brought up last month on the uh, Indian Housing Plan for 07. Uh, it's our understanding that the administration has contracted with Marvin Jones uh, to develop the plan. Uh, and he'll have more information on that later. We have over 6,500 families currently receiving assistance with uh, 2,100 on our community shield program. They will be out of the office next week, most of the week, 
thanks for the NAIHC Formula Task Force meeting and Legislative Committee meeting. You can contact him on his cell phone if you need to talk to him or you can call me. I'll talk to him on a regular basis. Uh, he received a call from HUD last week regarding the FEMA trailers. They wanted to know if we were interested in obtaining some of those. He told me yes, and uh, he'll have some more information for you on that also. And that's all I have. Questions for Amy? Don? I had a call from a constituent this week, and they just want to increase their claims for latest $15. Did they do it for everybody $15? As, as far as I understand, um, they're, it's mostly the new ones, but um, I'll have to check to be sure how that, how that went out. Mm -hmm. Amy, on those trailers you're talking about, did they give us any idea of how many might be available for us if we had? They said he wanted 300. Good. We've got 10,000 sitting there. Yeah, and we might as well get all we can get. Yeah. In fact, well, he might need to get with Sharon and them because if the housing board needs 300, the tribe uh, probably has a pretty good list besides that. Yeah. I think they've been emailing back and forth on that. Okay. Other questions? Yeah, because <coughs> if we get those, I mean, we've been buying used mobile homes for like five thousand dollars, and to just get people buy. And you know, if we could, you know, get a second change or you know, put that five thousand dollars with a brand new mobile home would sure make a big difference. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, that's it's really be a home run. And I mean, I would think that maybe even the council might want to put some money with it to, to be able to handle more of them. One of the things that we're doing is uh, we're working with uh, Steve Woodall, who's a planner. He has a lot of experience in planning and uh, is really an asset to uh, the communities. And uh, one of the things that he's really uh, opened our eyes was to look at long-range planning. And water is one of the things that we've been really looking at because I think most of us know that water is going to be an issue whether we like it or not. And, uh, of course, you know, Jay has got caught up in that situation, and I think there's some other plans that uh, maybe uh, some of the bigger uh, companies or more people that are wealthy and buying up land to understand that they're uh, trying to buy up some land where they're going to have property where they can store water. And then early on we heard that uh, the uh, water districts may be uh, more like leaning towards uh, going to corporate. Uh, level as far as I guess they're in a mill uh, in the process of getting uh, the corporations maybe trying to take over or something down the road. So that's one of the things that Steve is uh, looking at is uh, as, and also land. You know, uh, the nation ought to be uh, purchasing more land because land is, uh, as you know, the uh, population is growing and we need to buy more land. And that's what Steve's talking to the communities about and also getting the communities involved and their own planning for the future, what their 
uh, needs would be like instead of us from the community service or trying to plan the future for them. It's the people that's doing the planning. And then water is also being discussed in those meetings. So that's a good point you're talking about, Phyllis. So, but anyway, I just thought I'd mention that to y'all. Thank you. These issues of water certainly felt a bit like the deal at Rocky Mountain. Jack and Bob and I was out there at a meeting, and uh, and everything looked like a goal, and then we had a we had a snag. But I mean, it might be something we could entertain as a council on a kind of a priority or case by case type thing. As far as if the water district can't help or whatever, you know, if that's something we could deal with. From a money standpoint, we we could we could start maybe appropriating some money for those types of things, and kick it you know kick it up a little bit. Charlie's obviously the uh, community services have got the uh, uh, the housing program that, that works speed seems like compared to what it was a few months ago, and, and I, I'm certainly encouraged with that. So uh, things seem to be looking up. Appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to address that just a little bit. And you're exactly right. What we're finding over in the water and sanitation program is capital improvement projects on every rural water district here. What has happened over the last 20 to 30 years, they've extended those lines out and they've used two inch water lines out there. And when we want to go another four or five miles, they're you know, not large enough to handle the, the uh, demand. Mm -hmm. Talking about funding for those types, what we do is fund it through the Indian Health Service. We call it a sanitation deficiency system. If there's other monies that can be put into those capital improvement projects from the Cherokee Nation or EODD or Grand Gateway, that gets the points way up and those water lines will get funded. The last four or five years, the last three years I've been over there, we haven't had any money from the tribe to put money into those capital improvement projects. So what you said is exactly what we need. We need to have the dollars to put into those projects in order to get them funded. You know, if we had a million dollars, we could probably fund a million dollar project every year. But, you know, we don't have those match funding to go in and bring the point system up. So, you know, we've been, our hands have been tied for the last three or four years, but that's the problem. Uh, every project that we look at now, the water district needs those capital improvement projects done because we really can't go in and do anything unless, prime example is they there too. If we had a capital improvement project three years ago, we could probably upgrade those lines or help them, then we could go ahead and fund our Jackson Mountain project over there. So, yeah, I think you're looking, I think you're thinking the right, the right way here. All right, Mr. Baker, just uh, made a note here, uh, in ENF or whatever, he's going to start looking at some stuff with, uh, as he and Linda's chair and co-chair of the, of the finance side, mm -hmm. and we'll try to get some figures together as far as, mm -hmm. Money that might, we might be able to put into this. That's a good point. About every, every project that we look at, it, it needs to be some capital improvement project money for those existing water districts out there. It's hard to fund it through the Indian Health Service because they don't look at projects that people already have water. If people don't have water, that's where you get the most points. And obviously, you can't get water out there unless the district can provide it for you. So, capital improvement projects is what we're looking to try to get funded for this next, uh, next year. Good point. Thank you. I just want to make a comment. I think that's good discussion, and I think this council ought to be able to help with that. I appreciate the input. Thank you. Charlie, do you have something else? Okay. Right. Any other comments or any any concerns or whatever? Please, our reports. No old business. No new business. Next announcement. Second. All in favor? Aye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>